This editor picks interview is with Xing Feng Xiao and Danny Wong from Loft, a laboratory of fMRI technology at the Department of Neurology at the University of Southern California. Their paper presents a novel MR per sequence and modeling algorithm to quantify the water exchange rate across the blood barrier without contrast. In addition, they evaluate its clinical utility in a cohort of elderly subjects at risk of cerebral small vessels disease. I will now hand it over to Xingfeng, who will give us a brief overview of their work. Hi everyone, my name is Xingfeng Xiao from University of Southern California. Today I'm going to talk about our paper, Mapping Water Exchange Across the Blood-Brain Barrier Using 3D Diffusion Prepare Arterial Spin Enabling. In this paper, we are presenting the idea of using water permeability as an imaging biomarker to detect the early stage of small vessel disease and cognitive decline. Blood-brain barrier controls the exchange between the blood and the brain compartments. Dynamic contrast enhanced MRI has been commonly used to measure BBB permeability with injection of gadolinium-based contrast agents. Uh, and due to the large size of the contrast agent, DC MRI is usually used when the BBB is already disrupted. So compared to the contrast agents, water is an endogenous tracer with much smaller molecular size. And studying the water permeability is a hot topic right now, which is sensitive to BBB function and early stage of disease progression. Our group previously proposed using diffusion-weighted arterial spin labeling to measure water permeability non-invasively. However, SNR and reliability was low due to the 2D EPI readout. So in this paper, we propose a new sequence and a new reconstruction algorithm to improve the reliability of water permeability measurement. This is a diagram of the pulse sequence, which consists of Picasso labeling, diffusion preparation, and grease readout. The idea is to use diffusion weighting to separate the intravascular and the extravascular components of the label blood signal. So combining diffusion encoding and the TSE-based acquisition usually violates the CPMG condition. So in our paper, we use a non-CPMG approach by adding additional diffusing gradient pairs. And this sequence was also optimized for eddy current and slice profile. Water exchange rate, Kw, can be quantified using a single pass approximation model. This figure shows the results from our previous study. Kw is extremely sensitive to noise, but the tissue signal ratio is close to 1, as indicated by this red arrow. To improve the robustness of the Kw estimation, we propose a total generalized variation regularized reconstruction. So here is the TGV regularized SPA, SPA modeling. So Kw can be quantified by minimizing the fidelity term and both the second and the first order TV constraints. Here are the perfusion images acquired with Picasso and 3 delay time and 6 diffusion weightings. Here is a plot of the average perfusion signal with increasing, with increasing diffusion weightings. And perfusion signal from each PLD was indicated by a different color. For each curve, we apply a two-compartment fi fitting to separate the vascular compartment and the tissue compartment. As expected, tissue fraction increases with longer PLD, and due to the 100-fold difference in diffusion coefficients, two compartments can be separa separated with a small diffusion gradient. For example, with B equals to 50, perfusion signal contains only 1% of the capillary signal and 99% of the tissue signal. So blue map is a KW map estimated by directly applying the SPA model. As, as indicated by the red arrows, focal regions with high KW values can be observed. So second row shows the TGV regular rest reconstruction. Those suspicious high KW regions caused by noise were successfully removed. So 19 subjects with an average age of 69 years were recruited for test and retest scans about 2 to 4 weeks apart. So here are the example KW maps from, from one subject, and here's a scatter plot of the average KW from test and retest scans. 
ICC of Kw equals to 0.75, which indicates good reproducibility of the proposed technique. And last, we compare the KW and the clinical assessments from those 19 subjects. We found significant increase of KW in subjects with higher vascular risk and higher CDR score, which indicates severe dementia. And we also found a correlation between KW and NIH toolbox measurements, uh, such as attention and uh, short-term memory. Overall, KW increased with worse cognitive function. And here's the conclusion. Thanks for your attention. To start off, maybe you could tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became involved in this work. Yeah, for myself, I'm, my background is mm -hmm. in um, uh, actually in physics, like more physics part. And I learned a little bit like in neurology like during my uh, PhD. It's kind of a good combination, you know, like how to play with the MRI system and also, you know, how to face the, the clinical field. So kind of a combination. So actually, I want to correct him from just graduate. He said he's yeah. a, a student. He actually just graduated, defended uh, with this work. Oh, um, cool. May, in May or April? Um, May yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's, he decided to stay at our lab. So we're very <laughs> fortunate to have him. Yeah, so I'm actually a, a biophysicist. I'm a biophysicist. I've been in this field uh, 20, more than 20 years. So last year, I smiled, they gave me a banner for 20 <laughs> years, <laughs> I remember. <laughs> so I started at Sydney, yeah. So, um, so our lab, you know, I, I put this poster here. We call it a lab career functional and my technology. So we do mostly perfusion flow, you know, angiograph, uh, functional MI, and uh, uh, several neuromodulation a little bit. Uh, so DBB is definitely the paper is one of our main focus and also got a lot of attention, you know, in the scientific field just because it's linked to Alzheimer's disease, dementia, sleep apnea, etc. you know. So we first published the paper actually in 2007. So it's been a long way, the idea, you know, uh, that was 2D, you know, it was low SNR. Uh, it didn't get traction until recently, just because you know the ASL technology become mature. There's a white paper, and the people more and more using it. Uh, so the uh, so so you know it basically evolved into the stage we can reliably uh, measure BBB, and Jim Hoon did a lot of uh, you know. Uh, Kind of post sequence uh, innovation and optimization. At uh, we eventually were at this stage, so I, I'm very excited about this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now maybe more about your paper. <laughs> uh, what do you see as the main advantage of your um, diffusion paper 3D uh, Picasso sequence? So as Danny said, so now this technique attracts more and more attention because uh, we have higher SMR. So a lot of people trying to use water as a tracer because it's non invasive. And actually, a lot of people uh, working on water is trying to separate the intravascular and the extravascular compartments. So there are several approach uh, because you can separate based on the T2 difference or some different characteristics. So our advantage is we are trying to separate those two compartments based on the diffusion coefficients. So as shown in the paper, I mean, the diffusion coefficients are about like a hundredfold difference. So you can apply a small gradient to like uh, successfully separate those two compartments compared to other techniques is more uh, reliable or robust and you can do in a short time so which you can like fit into a clinical scan. So I, I think that's the most advantage of our techniques like uh, more robust and uh, using water as a tracer. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I want to add is because gadolinium, the other way is of course DCE, right? Gadolinium, so there's a, uh, there's a lot of concern recently, and also, you know, it's a larger molecular size, so, you know, you only um, get leakage when the yes. PVV is disrupted, or you, otherwise you scan a long time, you know, which is, has its own challenges. So. And were you surprised by the result of the test retest repeatability of the diffusion uh, Picasso? Yeah, so, I mean, we, we are kind of a version of a modified version of ASL. So ASL is already have good reproducibility right now, like 0 0.8, 0 0.9. Uh, 
So we're still be lower, but it's pretty good. We have to say. So we have um, so we have a lot of um, uh, I mean we have some reconstruction algorithm trying to minimize the noise, but the global uh, I mean the reproducibility is pretty good right now. Uh, yeah, Danny would like to add something. Uh, I think yeah, I think it just uh, it's I want to emphasize. It's really very real kind of world experiment. Yes. Uh, we recruit the subject from communities. Uh, so their average is 70 years old and we ask yeah. them back. Uh, yeah. It's uh, on average, I think it was six weeks, about four to six weeks. So it's really yeah, a very real world kind of situation. It's not, you know, a lab kind of students <laughs> or staff, uh, so they, you know, uh, on and off the table <laughs> uh, a few hours, a few days. So it's, uh, I think that's that, that's a very good point. And at the moment, what are the things that might still limit the widespread use of this technique? I think it's because, um, so we are trying to make this kind of useful for the clinical studies. We're starting with relatively lower, I mean, resolution to make like a 10 minute scan. So eventually we're trying to push the ISNR and the resolution higher so we can do regional analysis uh, such as basal ganglia. We can see how those regions, like uh, the water permeability change with some disease or, yeah. So I think that's a future direction. Yeah, I think, you know, right now it's just making the pulse sequence more, uh, you know, more kind of user-friendly, right? Yes. Yeah. So right now still, I think you can need to do some offline reconstruction. Yes. But although even with that, we already have many groups contact us. So we uh, this shares case-based data with us, we <laughs> can share data for them. Uh, we already get very encouraging results from several other groups. Yeah. 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 Especially from young subjects they're sending us, I think, I mean, the SNR is even higher than our, I mean, data we get from here. So I think it's pretty good. It's pretty promising now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, in your opinion, what would be the best way to validate the, to validate the technique? Mm -hmm. There are several ways. So easiest to do the DC comparison. So we have some data, but I mean the mechanism is different because DC is larger. So it's I mean kind of a little bit hard to compare, especially you have a long time to do the DC scan. And another way we are trying to do is to to do some animal studies like. Uh, using uh, high field animal scanners. We are trying to kind of, there are some different uh, uh, disease models so we can validate our study in the kind of animal study. So you can see how the direction of the KW change in response to the different disease. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think animal study probably would be the gold standard of course, you know, uh, Actually, with contrast, uh, not only you can measure the k trends of the gadolinium, yes. you can also measure water exchange, actually. Uh, so there's several groups who are working uh, with, uh, you can do small animal, maybe you can do primates. Uh, and, and actually, I think this technique, you can even do humans, right? You know, yes. Yeah. So, and also mechanism-wise, you know, what it is really, measuring right you know because the bbb has several layers we have endothelium and you know parasites and uh, uh then it's exercise and the foot uh with aquaponing so the aquaponing was most uh, yes you know interesting <laughs> and it's related to lymphatic system and the, um so I think, you know, maybe the animal study will help us tease apart some of the mechanisms, yeah. And so my last question, you uh, st already started answering uh, uh, to this question earlier, but maybe you can expand. Um, where do you see this work heading? Actually, there's a, actually there are a lot of stories I want to say, but like what interesting ones, like, you know, there, my wife works in the uh, pharmaceutical company, so I know a lot of the news about them, like developing drugs for Alzheimer's disease, kind of. A lot of those drugs fail, so yeah. kind of, uh, they're trying to clear, I mean, those alpha, beta, I mean, the uh, amyloid depo deposits, so kind of that's the results of the BBB leakage, so people trying to work on that to help, like, restore Alzheimer's disease. 
Like tree, we are trying to, our technique is able to detect the BVV leakage or the BVV dysfunction at the earlier stage. So, I mean, studying the water permeability may help people to know like what changes at an earlier stage of those cognitive impairment. So I think this is a, a promising future to studying the water permeability and may help people really understanding, I mean, what's the uh, physiology like changes like before you really get into the dementia or the Alzheimer's disease. I mean, that's a big future of our study, but for now we are trying to get reliable measurements and we need more validation and we are trying to push in the resolution to see really like how this technique can be accepted by the field. So uh, Xinfeng already mentioned, I think the dementia is one of probably the biggest, uh, um, you know, kind of direction. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, there's several other uh, study as well, you know, for example, I think some psychiatry disease, um, there's actually evidence that they link to acquiring function. Yes. In, in terms of uh, their genes, they have to have some overlap with the acquirings. Okay. Um, so, uh, and also sleep, I think sleep would be a very big field uh, because, you know, there's the uh, glymphatic system and the other water, uh, Basically, it's the uh, export <laughs> of water uh, through the brain. Um, so now, of course, I'm uh, you know, before you start this clinical brain, still you have to understand the mechanism. Yes. Uh, yeah. So I think uh, probably still in terms of validation um, mechanism study to understand what it is really measuring and uh, then you know going to clinical uh, applications yeah thank you very much for thank your you. Time. thank you <laughs> thank you very much yeah, thank you thank you all for watching and if you have any question for the others please leave them in the youtube comment section below see you next time